Okay, so now uh, look at these two plots. Okay, they show the same information: displacement on the x-axis and highway mileage on the y-axis. What is really different about the two of them? Clearly, both describe the same data. What is the difference? The only difference is that they are using different visual objects to display the same data. Right? So this is using one geom, the point geom. This is using a different geom, but they are displaying the same data. Okay? So in ggplotspeak, we say that these two are using different geoms. Okay? So this plot would be generated by geom point. And of course, we already know the aesthetic is x is displacement, y is highway. We know that. This is using the same aesthetic, x is displacement, y is highway, but the geometric that it's being that it's using is geom smooth. Okay? Smooth, what it does is it plots a smooth line using a local smoothing. That's a technique that it uses, and it plots a smooth line across these points. That's what this line is. Okay. It's not a regression line, but this is a line based on uh, local smoothing. Okay, so that's it's called the lowest smooth line. So it draws the smooth line, and around that it is showing a 95% confidence interval band. Okay, in other words, what it's really doing is it's fitting a model to this data, and then using the model to predict the value at each level of displacement, and it's showing you 95% confidence interval. That means it's saying that my prediction, there is a 95% chance that the actual prediction will fall in, uh, the actual value will fall in this band, but my prediction is this, okay? It's just like, uh, you know, in the paper when they say, uh, we expect the value to be something, and then we say that uh, we have a 95% confidence that the actual value lies between something and something, right? So they make one prediction, but obviously that prediction is a little uncertain, uh, in the reality could be in a wider band. So that's the thing. So there is a 95% chance that the prediction will fall within this range and that is what this broad band represents. Okay. Uh, so that's the geom smooth. right? So you can have the same aesthetics but if you change the geom then the graph that appears would be different. Okay. So that uses the point geom which is the scatter plot, smooth geom which gives the smooth line. Okay, so clearly there are many many uh, geoms in ggplot. I think twenty or thirty different geoms, and uh, each produces a certain type of plot. So, for example, geom line produces a line plot. Geom bar produces a bar plot. Box plot produces a box plot. Point is an exception. Geom point produces a scatter plot. They could have called it geom scatter. I don't know why they didn't. Okay, so if you go into the documentation of ggplot, you'll see a lot of these things. In fact, better still, what I would recommend is to get the, get hold of the ggplot cheat sheet, right? So, uh, in a search engine, just search ggplot cheat sheet, and you'll get a PDF cheat sheet, uh, two pages that summarizes the whole of ggplot. Clearly, what I'm going to be covering class is only a small part of it, but those two sheets will cover the whole thing. So. Uh, from my class, you will have the concepts of how to use ggplot and then you can use the, uh, the cheat sheet to uh, enhance your skills. Okay, uh, so geoms and aesthetics, that's what we are seeing here. Right? And as I had mentioned earlier, the applicable uh, aesthetics depending upon the ge depend upon the geom. Right, so for example, uh, shape aesthetic applies only to geom point. Okay, you cannot apply the shape aesthetic to a geom line. That would not make any sense. Okay, similarly, line type is an aesthetic that applies only to line plots uh, or plots that end up as lines, but it does cannot apply to geom point and so on. Right, so there is a uh, you know a different geoms use uh, you know might use different sets of aesthetics. Okay, so if you see an error message, then you know what happened. Okay, so here let's see this plot. ggplot data equals mpg. So this time we are specifying the data in ggplot, and that means it will carry over to this to the geoms. So geom smooth. So we are drawing the smooth line. X is displacement. Y is highway. Okay, uh, so that's fine. So we are plotting uh, uh, displacement on the x-axis and highway mileage on the y-axis, and we are going to get a smooth line. So you might think that the result is going to look like like this. 
right? Displacement and uh, highway going to look like this. But see what we are doing then. We have now said line type is drive, meaning front wheel, rear wheel, four wheel. That's the value of this. So we are saying make the type of the line depend upon the kind of drive that the car has. So implicitly what we are saying is, and remember this line type is inside aesthetic, right? In fact, I should have displayed it like that. It's inside aesthetic. The aesthetic parenthesis open here and it closes here. Okay. So what we are actually ending up saying is plot a separate line for cars of each drive, right? So give me a separate smooth line for four wheel drive cars. Give me a separate smooth line for uh, front wheel and rear wheel. So this will actually have three smooth lines. That's what you're seeing here. This is one smooth line that corresponds to the four wheel drive cars. This is the second smooth line corresponding to the front wheel drive cars. This is the third smooth line corresponding to the rear wheel drive cars. Okay. And once again, when you see comparisons like this, a lot of things jump out, right? So if you look at the four-wheel car drive cars, you can see there's a very clear pattern. With the front-wheel drive cars, you see that up to a point, the uh, mileage increases with the size of the engine, displacement of the engine. But after that, it seems to plateau off, just not, a, not, a, not plateau off, but level off at this lower level. Right. That is interesting. We need to examine why that is happening. Okay, And then uh, with front wheel drive cars, the pattern is even more peculiar. It, uh, the efficiency decreases with displacement as you would expect, but then it starts increasing with uh, displacement after a while. Okay, So uh, these are some peculiar things that are going on. I'm sure this part of it is related to those uh, you know, those sports cars that we saw earlier, the two two-seater sports cars, uh, possible. I mean, just generating uh, questions for us to explore and understand the data better. Right? Another thing you will also notice is that if you see that the band is pretty narrow, as opposed to the band here being very large, usually the band will be very large if the sample size is very small. Right? Because with very small sample size, your confidence intervals will become huge because uncertainty increases. You are making a decision based on very few uh, samples that you have, okay? very few data sets, uh, data points that you have. So maybe uh, some of these anomalies that we are seeing are just uh, happening because of that. There are some few exceptional case uh, cars uh, sitting at these extremes and they are skewing the data. Whatever it is, it gives us some fodder to think about. Okay, so here now uh, we are saying line type is drive, color is also drive. Okay, so now each of the lines is going to have a different color, right? So this is exactly like the previous plot, except that we now added additional emphasis by uh, doing the color. Oh, by the way, we also added two geoms in the same plot. Okay, that is interesting. So we said ggplot data is mpg, that is fine. Then we said geom point and color equals drive. So we got the scatter plot with the color based on drive. And here, geom smooth, the line type is based on drive, the color is based on drive. Okay. So notice how it made the legend based on both the line type and the color. Okay. So it did that, that is pretty, uh, pretty powerful. Okay, so you can add these things. You can. What this is showing you is that you could have multiple, uh, uh, multiple geoms on the same plot, on different layers, and if you have, uh, you know, the, the the aesthetics mapping things uh, in to, in both the geoms based on the same variable, then it intelligently converts the legend as well, which is pretty uh, smart. Okay, so this is one example that we saw, just a plain smooth line, just a single geom smooth. And then now we are, uh, I, I'm just eliding these initial details because they're all the same, aesthetics x, uh, 
you know, mapping is, that part is the same. Only thing now we are saying group is dry. Right? So when you group, what you're saying is, plot for me a separate uh, graph based on the subsets of each of these. You know, this is just like earlier when we said color equals dry. Right? So what it did was it plotted a separate uh, smooth line for cars of each drive. It did that. But when you just say group, all you're saying is group them and give me separate lines. It does this, but it does not give you uh, any legend or anything. Right? So if you look at this graph, you don't know which line belongs to, uh, to which one. Okay? So we know that uh, there's some front wheel drive here, four wheel drive here, rear wheel drive here, but we don't know which is which. Okay, so that's not a, you know, that's not a useful plot, right? So just using group sometimes is not very useful. So instead, instead of just doing group, we can say color equals drive, which has the effect of grouping by drive, okay? Uh, but it also has the effect of giving you the legend and plotting each one with a separate color, right? So this, uh, you know, having color or line type or any of these things, it has the effect of grouping plus also visually uh, separating them out. Okay, so I would say most of the time we would find ourselves doing, uh, you know, something like color or line type or shape or something like that rather than just blandly group, which shows no visual dis uh, difference at all. 